stand it anymore. I've got to get out of here. I've got to get out of here. Calm down. Get a hold of yourself. Just do this. Please, let me handle this. I've got to get Calm down. Now get back to your seat. I'll take care of this. Calm down. Calm down. Get a hold of yourself. Doctor, you want it on the phone. Everything's going to be all right. Please. Sister, please, now handle this. I've got to get out of here. I've got to And now, coming to you live from the tri-state area and San Francisco, California, it's the best part of Wednesday, Waffle Box, with your hosts, Mike Fish and Kush Hayes. Ooh, welcome to Waffle Box, the podcast where we talk about anything, everything, and nothing, all at the same time. Coming up on episode 87, the letter of the day is A. For anti-Semitism, what wouldn't you do to grab a free drink, cocaine, bear, and more? I am Mike Fish, and I am joined, as always, by the main man from San Fran, it's Mr. Kush Hayes! Kush, how you doing, my man? What's good, y'all? Kush Hayes here. Episode 87 of the original Waffle Box, did I hear that correctly? The original oh. Waffle Box, where you accept no substitutions, because it is the best part of Wednesdays. Mike Fish, I'm blown away. 87 of these episodes. Yeah, sorry, I was just taken away there by the abrupt end of the intro song, but there we go. Yeah, 87 episodes. Good Lord. What have we been doing with our lives? Soon it'll be Christmas. I know. I know. How's your weekend? It was good. Oh, oh, I got a story. Have I got a story mm-hmm. for you? Everyone mm-hmm. sit down, gather around. Uncle Mike has a tale for you. So this past weekend more specifically technically monday monday but that's whatever some some people consider monday the weekend um we finally got our first like good decent snow of the season right We've already got like, back right. end of february we finally got the big snow right but here's my problem right so recently Normally, weather apps, you know, like you got the iPhone weather app, you got the AccuWeather app. <laughs> normally, they're yes. they're not one hundred percent, but normally they're pretty pretty good, right? Better than average. Spot better than average. Yeah, they're batting like a like a six hundred maybe. But recently, many days go by where it's I, I open the app and it says heavy snow, and then you look outside and it's like blue skies like hmm okay like on saturday it was like heavy snow for five hours we didn't even get a drop no one even a cloud because like you normally you think okay it's not going to be pinpoint accurate to like your where your phone is it's not saying it's right there it's like in the general area right so but mm-hmm. you think if it says heavy snow you'd at least expect some kind of light snow in my area were at best or worse whatever but nothing it's just been stupidly inconsistent so on Monday, Monday rolls around, and the weather app is predicting, oh, at five o'clock, brace yourself. There's going to be so much snow. Five o'clock rolls around, no snow. 5.30, no snow. Six o'clock, no snow. 6.30, no snow. So I was like, you know what, fuck. I'm not going to live my life by this app. I'm going to go out. <laughs> so I went out, went out for dinner. Right. Only about sure. 20 minutes from my apartment. So I'm driving. And so I'm in the restaurant, 7, 7.30. No snow, no snow whatsoever. So and then at one point, after my meal, a couple of drinks, I'm like, you know, I'm going to go outside for a quick nicotine intake, right? So I mm-hmm. turn around and... There was a blizzard. <laughs> All of a sudden, it just came out of nowhere. I was like, ah, oh, yeah. So I was promptly finished my drink and left because I was like, okay, I'm. Before it gets too bad, I'm not. I'm not going to get stuck in this. But already, it was just like visibility was ridiculously low, and so I'm driving at like 15 miles per hour, even on the highway. Like I'm like, nope. I'm not taking any risks. Screw, screw this. Just one five. One, one five. five miles per hour. Mm-hmm. And 
even like on the what you could see already there's cars crashed into each other along i'm like oh fuck me (laughs) and so not to get too into the weeds but i live kind of like in the middle-ish of a hill so my two options are i had to either go (laughs) up a hill or down a hill neither one are really enticing the the problem with you going down down the hill is you might not be able to stop and the problem with you going up the hill is you might not be able to go up the hill and only go back down the hill and, and then, not be able to stop. And so kind of like the, the lesser of two evils, I guess I'd rather be sliding facing rather than sliding backwards and not being able to see anything. Yeah, so I mean, I you, think... you hit the right patch of ice, you spin around. It don't matter. Anymore. Yeah, I could do but... a 360. I'm sure. So yeah. I, I decided, you know what? Screw it. I'm, I'm going to go downhill. But by the time, again, this is only a 20 minute journey good in this condition, it was like a 35 minute journey. At one point, because I was like, I had to turn into like a side street and all I could, it's crunching and the car is in slow motion, sliding sideways. And in the end, I was like, okay, I found a little safe spot. Fuck it. I'm leaving the car here. I'll come back for it. And I just walked home. I was like, fuck this. I'm not dying tonight. No, smart. Yeah. And then I how woke far up away and... from home were you? Uh, five, ten minute walk wasn't too bad. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah, it could have been worse. But then I wake up the next yeah. day and it's like maybe four inches of snow on the ground. I don't know what the hell happened, but mm-hmm. it was not fun. I thought I was going to die. But there you go. I had a similar incident with the weather app, not just last night, but more importantly, Friday night worked uh as I divulged, my new secret love is college basketball because it's a quarter of the work and all the pay. And this Friday was no different. And the weather app is saying it's going to rain all day. Now, again, it's basketball. So majority of the time we're indoors, but there's going to be a portion of the time where we're outdoors. And that's what really counts. And when I get to work, no rain. It had been raining all day, but that was done. Uh, blue skies, a little overcast, no big whoop. We've set up. We get lunch. We perform the game. No rain. The game is over. We are now ready to take equipment from the indoors to the outdoors. And then biblical sheets of rain come down. And we're we're tolerating. You know, I I even came prepared, Mike. Like I said, the app said it's going to be raining all day. So I brought some rain pants. So, like, I'm okay. Uh, At worst, my bag is getting soaked, but not a problem. Um, We're packing these trucks. And, by the way, it's, it's a lot of rain. So, guess what? We're not standing on flat ground we're standing in a slight concrete so it's there's there's a slight puddle that has formed and then all of a sudden a flash of lightning and uh my man to the left over here he knows how to do that thing where he he know counts one two mm-hmm. three and then he hears the here's the thunder and then he does some sort of multiplication he's like it's nine miles away from us and we're like, all right well it's nine miles and then we hear another one and i was like i don't even need to do the math it's like oh that's, that's closer much closer <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> He still does. He's like, it's five miles out. Then the next one is like, oh, that's right on top of us. Um, And now my man is starting to get spooked. Not because he's one of those pussies that gets afraid of thunder or lightning. He's not that dude at all. But you are surrounded by a lot of electrical equipment. A lot of electrical equipment between two metal trucks standing again in a puddle as it is currently raining. Um, So I totally understand where he was coming from. Oh, by the way, we're holding aluminum banisters because we just took out the stairs that are also metal. So like, there's tons of danger happening in here. Spoiler alert, we don't get electrocuted. However, at some point, it just starts hailing. We don't get snow. We get hail. And at that point, I just start cackling like a bastard. And he looks at me like, this guy's crazy. And he's not wrong. However, there's just the weather could not make up its mind what it wanted to be Friday night. And um, it was quite, quite dramatic. Well, there you go. That's kind of underwhelming. We both have stories where we could have died, but we didn't. Mm-hmm. We're fine. No, oh, no, I'm happy to say we didn't die. But yeah, hell, hell, we wouldn't not... be telling this story if we did die. Indeed. That is a fact. This would be someone else's narrative. And then Kush um, just set on fire. It was like, <laughs> like a match. Unless we like carry around recording equipment and whenever we have a near death experience, we quickly document it and then someone else edits it. And so we can like, what's, what's the word? Post humorously, humorously thing after, after you're dead. We can like 
do their mm-hmm. you know a podcast look at that. Oh, podcasts from the dead or podcasts from beyond the grave that would be cool yeah, i said i was standing between two giant metal trucks but there there might might have been surveillance footage of the uh, of the lightning if it if if i had indeed got struck by lightning i mean you say he's not a pussy but you know it's it's very rare I must admit, in my lifetime, but when those moments that you do realize that the lightning is literally on top of you and you get the flash and the huge bang at the same time, that is like, oh, fuck that. Mm-hmm. If you're outdoors, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, I normally oh. end my Again, cigarette totally pretty understood. quickly at that point. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. No, be fun stuff, be fun times. If I die through lightning strike while cigarette oh, was it the cigarette that killed him no it was lightning, he was lightning. <laughs> you'd be like take that fate i beat you <laughs> i never had to quit smoking i did it my way <laughs> not your way society my way the mike fish way speaking of smoking right now before i get into this little rant mm-hmm. i'm gonna quickly say i do not suggest anyone if you're not if you're not a smoker don't start smoking it's bad for your health it's bad for your wallet as well don't do it however what i don't like is when people are trying to tell me that i should give up smoking by by giving me false information or gaslighting me or whatever what is the phrase because there's you know the is it like truth.com you familiar you're familiar with their, their work right uh, I assume there's not much truth on truth.com. Fucking assholes, right? They're running this current ad campaign, <laughs> right? It's basically talking oh, about the anti-smoking. Yes, yeah, yes. and then I, I've, I have a lot of problems with them too. But it was talking about the whole gist of this commercial was like smoking actually increases your blood pressure and causes stress rather than being a stress reliever, right? Which Fine, I'm sure there is science behind that. I'm not going to argue with that, right? I think that's pretty factual, actually. But keep going. Ever the way they're like kind of is the way they toying or showcasing this is like, oh, hey, the big, the big cigarette companies try to tell you that it's a stress reliever. I'm like, what? What in the '60s? Where I've never seen a, I haven't seen a cigarette commercial ever. No, like, I've never ever been told. By the that the Marlboro man, he's been dead years. Like no, no one is ever advertising to me that it's a stress reliever. Don't give me this shit. Oh, um, you should listen to old radio ads from like the World War exactly. II era. The, those exactly. were a lot of fun. I'm pretty sure no one who's just starting smoking in 2023 is being sold by 1950s radio commercials. Yeah, but they used to also. I mean, it doesn't just go to. Uh, tv and radio like there's there's print media newport alive with pleasure like that's that was that, that might still be their slogan to be honest i don't even think they're allowed, no one's allowed to advertise anymore. yeah i was gonna say last but, time uh, i saw an advertisement for n- nicotine or tobacco must have been like the early 90s mm. sounds about right and again if you saw that ad in the early 90s and just now you're watching this commercial, right? Let's just say in the early nineties, those commercials got you. What? I wasn't going to start smoking, but stress relief. I have a lot of stress in my life. Well, I'm going to listen to this commercial and I'm going to start smoking. 30 years later, I don't think watching this commercial by truth.com is going to make you go, wait, wait, what? I've been lied to? Or I forget this stuff that a cigarette. Like, fuck off. Fuck off truth.com. Waste the money. Whoever's donating to this. Yeah. Oh, gonna... no, that's, that's coming from government funds. Government funds and Philip Morris. I don't know if it's a, a matching thing. So, but... so me, I'm not, I was going to flash a packet, but not, no advertising. Um, so me purchasing cigarettes the tax from them are paying for anti-cigarette ads, basically what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Yes. So if I'm paying, if I'm the tax, if I'm my, leave me alone. Do something better with my money. Where do I write? Who do I write to? 
Mm, your congressman? Dear congressman. Who's your, my congressman? Your senator how in you, New Jersey? Who, how do you find out who your congressman is? I don't even know. Oh, uh, is that something New I'm Jersey supposed to know? will have yours. I mean, yes, in theory, but no one I know. Does. I know my governor. Okay, that's a good start. Send yes. him a letter, too. Dear Governor Murphy, Philip. <laughs> How are you doing? I am fine. Recently, I'm... I was watching the TV. <laughs> stop. And I noticed, stop. Yeah, my, um, my favorite truth ad to hate is one where a guy's on his balcony. He's having a cigarette. It's a beautiful night. The smoke goes up in the air, travels back into his house, goes through the air duct, upstairs into the neighbor's apartment, and then the grim specter of death in a smoke shape stands over a crib and just watches wow. his baby sleep. And it's like, fuck you. You having a cigarette fuck on the balcony? You, and your mom. you are murdering children right now. And I'll be like, eh, fuck those kids. Whatever. Fuck those kids. To be fair, that in that exact situation, that, that baby's probably been crying all night and keeping that guy up all night. So he hasn't been able to get much sleep before work. And he's a stressful day at work. And, you know, the least he can have is a cigarette. Don't be so selfish, you baby. Stop being a this baby. Is why, this, is, this is why we're co-hosts of the original Waffle Box, Mike. You, I think it's you say it. Like them kids. Anyway, talking about kids, uh, one of uh, yeah. Chew, yeah. one of uh, yeah, what? Well, let's, let's defend smoking while I just cough my lungs up. <laughs> um, one of kids' favorite entertainers is Elmo. Is that, that was my impression of Elmo. Elmo, hi, really? I'm okay. Elmo. And oh, he's still a thing. Wow, he's been oh, he's. <laughs> He's still a thing, all right. So you know, as well as I do, that some people, to try to make money, maybe to buy cigarettes, uh, they dress up as characters in the streets, in tourist destinations, <laughs> and get morons oh, yeah. to take pictures of them because, oh, my God, this is oh, this, this seven-foot-tall Elmo who must be the real thing because it looks exactly like that. Stupid. Although I will admit, one day, one time, I was in Las Vegas and mm -hmm. I saw two people dressed up like Kiss, and mm -hmm. all they were wearing was the big hair, the makeup, and like arseless chaps. Oh, okay. And I was <laughs> there may have been some alcohol involved in my decision making but i was like you know what i'm not gonna pass up this opportunity so i do have a photo somewhere of me in the middle of these two <laughs> these kiss me well, it's funny so i, I... but then but fearless then, then I, I did fearless tip. mike fish i did tip them um, okay yeah you're supposed to do that although i don't know um, there's a the great money, documentary frankly, i don't know if it's i don't think it's streaming anywhere but there's a documentary about the folks who dress up like superheroes outside the uh, man's Chinese theater in Los Angeles. And uh, you think they're part of uh, the, the theater there. Nope. They're just panhandlers. They're just the bums. Um, and the guy who plays Batman may have actually killed a guy. It's pretty crazy. I hope it was a villain. I hope he did it whilst dressed as Batman. <laughs> he might have. He actually pretty... might have. That'd be pretty hilarious. Like, if I was a police officer, I mean, obviously I'd do my job, but there would be a little part of me of like, wait, this guy murdered someone dressed as... That's fantastic. Uh, he gets one. I mean, you'd probably I'll definitely off. take a photo with one. him at the cell. No, Just no, no, pure you creativity. Him, I'll you'd probably take a photo well. with him in this. Man, <laughs> Batman. You see this fucker? Hey, well, you got a tip? Yeah, don't kill anyone, idiot. Um, <laughs> hey. that, was, that was an easy one. Well right, done, anyway. Sir. Well done. So, yes. So, this um, notorious street performer um, mm. who dressed as Elmo has notorious been recently 
terrorizing the good fine people of Santa Cruz, or at least the Taurus. California? In Santa okay. Cruz, California. Um, dressed wow. as the Cookie Monster. Not now, Elmo. Not Elmo. But turns out this same guy used to be dressed as Elmo until he got arrested mm. in New York for screaming anti uh basically anti-Jewish stuff. He was not he was just like walking around as anti-Semitic. Elmo. Yeah, I always anti-Semite and anti-Semitic. Yeah. Same thing. Both I same pronounce thing. it. That's how good I am. Um but yes, so he was like just walking around, yelling. and so he got arrested, and so he went to the West Coast for. They'll recognize me as Elmo, so he just as a Cookie Monster started doing this, right? No, cook. That's diabolical. <laughs> now, so police in Santa Cruz have warned folks not to engage with the costumed creep, as this New York Post article reads. Um, after receiving reports that he's been frightening people by shouting at them and spouting angry conspiracy theories. Now, this fella, um, his name is Adam Sandler, not the saint, not that guy. This is a very, not Adam. It's very problematic. It's very, because if you Google, anyway, yeah. Someone just, someone for the first time watches an Adam Sandler movie and Googles that and this is what they see. Oh my God, that PR nightmare. Um, I sincerely wish he was dressed like the water boy or like opera man or like one of the actual Adam Sandler bits. Genius. That would make this story way more amazing. But it's Cookie Monster, so I'm sorry. It's Cookie Monster. But yeah, so he became famous um, being a, quote, much buzzed about Big Apple villain in September 2012 when he was arrested for going on a wild Jew-hating rant at the crossroads of the world, which is basically like near Times Square, just in case you don't know where this is. Where the five boroughs meet up? No. This is just oh. Times Square. But Times Square is on 8th. The world is like... Anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He pleaded guilty to disorderly conduct and was dubbed Evil Elmo. And he was sentenced to a year behind bars in 2013 for the equally bonkers crime of trying to extort two million dollars from the Girl Scouts. You desire to know more intensifies. <laughs> Indeed. So how how could someone dressed as Elmo um, try to extort two million dollars from the Girl Scouts, you ask? So he would send them emails saying, and I quote, I will show up at Girl Scout functions and other places that parents and kids congregate and hold signs connecting the Girl Scouts with the Cambodian rape camp man. That's very now, specific. <laughs> more what? questions, I'm sure. Like, who or what is the Cambodian rape camp man? Well, Kush Hayes, I will give you one guess who the Cambodian rape camp man is. Is he a man who rapes a Cambodian man who rapes at camp? Quite possibly, but who who if you had to name someone who possibly played the Cambodian rape camp man, who would you say? I don't know. I don't know my question. I'm I'll scared. give you a clue. He also played Elmo and Cookie Monster and has an unfortunate oh, celebrity-based name. Uh, Kevin, Kevin Simmons, so Kevin Smith. Adam Sandler, Kevin, anyway. Kevin, we're going just, we're just talking about him. Oh, still right. Adam Sandler? It's the same guy. It's the same guy. Adam Sandler. So he was warning them, oh, I will so connect the... you with another one of my alter egos. So oh. the Cambodian rape camp man was a reference to himself when in 1999... Oh, he was arrested in Cambodia for running a live porn website there called, quote, Welcome to Rape Camp. That was the website's name. Holy. Wow. Yeah. This took a dark turn. Like it was, I guess it was already dark to begin with, but like this, this, this keeps getting darker. Like computer, turn off A. 
But what's, what's That's how bonkers to me got. is that so in 1999, he was arrested in Cambodia for running a live porn website where he decided to name it Welcome to the Rape Camp. Then mm-hmm. he tried to extort $2 million from the Girl Scouts. Then he went on hateful speeches dressed as Elmo. Now he's in California dressed as a cookie monster spouting conspiracy theories. And the story just ends in uh, cops are warning people to avoid him. Why is this guy still out? Why is he not in? Why is it? What if they if he got arrested? So he, he already bars. did his time for the website thing. And he already did his time That's for the true. anti-Semitic stuff in New York. No, um, at this no, point, he didn't. It's just a f- no, he got he arrested. arrested in New York. He got arrested for the rape camp. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yes, I've said that. I, this is um, this this never episode, thought you would say. It. I get it. Um, and then he got put in jail for a year for extorting, trying to extort two million dollars from the Girl Scouts. Trying to extort the Girl Scouts, referring to the, rape the stuff camp. he so, did as so, Elmo. I mean, technically, fine. yeah. It, it it gets into a debate about free speech and all that. Like he he's allowed to shoot his mouth off, but um, this man is clearly disturbed. Like this this was starting off as one of those funny. Oh look at aren't people just the craziest, Mike Fish? <laughs> no, no, people are crazy, Mike Fish, and I I for one am afraid. I like I need to be armed right now. Um um, damn. Like all right, so I got I got a pair of scissors. And I'm ready to just crawl Maga anybody in the neck. To be fair, I, I love the, the. To be fair, the, the <laughs> police. Fair. Well, no, I'm saying that, but the police are saying, you know, steer clear for him from him. Mm-hmm. If I see a six foot, I don't actually know how tall he was, but let's just say six foot Elmo mm-hmm. or Cookie Monster y- yelling hate speech and conspiracy theories. First thing that comes into mind isn't going to be. Excuse me, can I have a photo, please? Sorry, could, could I? Could I? Could I? Of course, I'm going to fucking steer clear uh, that guy. Fuck that. I mean, much like a subway sandwiches, um, the the guy who originally played Elmo caught a caught a real bad case of you know stuff with minors and whatever. I don't know all the details. I've, I've he got too to carried away with putting his hand where it shouldn't have been. Let's just say that. That's that's all we're gonna say there. But I I now equate that with anyone dressed as Elmo. So if you're dressed as Elmo, I, I kind of think you're already bad news. It's it's a maybe it's just guilt by association. Maybe it's me not separating the art from the artist. Um, but I mean, yeah, yeah, the puppet. It's did all bad. Wrong. Stop stop. But still, it's smirching Elmo's good name. But Whereas still. the Cookie Monster, perfect, get it, like. That that dude has issues. That's like a dr- that was basically Sesame Street's drug addict, but they couldn't say drugs. So, it's so like... far, two people related to Elmo have issues. So this is a this is a trend. Next will be a pattern. But this one guy has already just ruined the reputation of Elmo, Cookie Monster, and Adam Sandler. I want to say Cookie Monster is played by Frank Oz, and Adam Sandler is a gentleman. So it's it's just yeah it's it's weird. It's, yeah. Do you know what movie I watched the other day for like the twentieth time? Did you watch it. Hmm. Fifty first dates. It's a classic. Okay. Yeah, it's a cute so movie. Good. So good. That's a good one to appease the little lady at home, I imagine. And she is. She's like four foot seven. Anyway, and those two have real good chemistry. Him and Drew Barrymore. That's Haven't they, they done them, like three of those things? Several, I was gonna say they've done they've done quite a few. Obviously, they did, they did the um, wedding singer, the wedding singer. That's the, that's the best. That is my my favorite go to movie. Like, it's not my favorite movie of all time, but it's my favorite. Mm-hmm. When in doubt, wedding singer. The wedding singer, while it came out in the late nineties, was the first movie to like going eighties nostalgia. I was like, pump your brakes, bro. <laughs> I can't handle this right now. So it was only fourteen years ago. Okay, chill out. Oh, I was going to do this song, but <laughs> just in case, because my 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 singing is so good, we might get flagged for copyright. 
Okay. Yeah, let's not do that. Give let's move on to a new. Let's move on to a happier subject. Do you Something really fun. want to hurt me? Um. Yes. Next story. Next. Computer, lights on. Okay. Yeah, why are your lights off? There we go. Because it was a dark story. Um. The audio. It's a visual missed, medium. Yeah, I was gonna say the audio. This is off. totally missed that. Oh, ASMR. Um, okay, next one. What would you do if you're on a commercial airline and you're like, you know what? I want a complimentary beverage. Hmm. And now, turns out they don't do that on um, domestic flights, which I found out and made me sad. But some people really like a little tipple, tipple on the flight. So American Airlines flight recently was forced to make an emergency landing in North Carolina on Wednesday, last Wednesday, after an unruly woman in first class, it's always first class. It's wankers. always first class, right? First class wankers. Um, allegedly, coach. I've got another problem here. Allegedly tried to breach the cockpit because she was upset at not <laughs> being served a drink. Oh, that boy. is the ultimate Karen... I want to speak to your manager moment. It's a shame it was on a Wednesday because we'd like to see you next Tuesday. Come on. Boom. Why haven't I got that on my soundboard? Anyway, next week. Um, American Eagle flight 3444 from Jacksonville, Florida. Of course, it was from Florida. to so Washington, D.C. was diverted to oh. Raleigh Durham International Airport at about 3.40 p.m., due to a security concern involving an unruly customer. The airline said in a statement, Tiffany Miles, 36, was arrested on a misdemeanor charge and was released on bond, CNN reported. First and foremost, again, I think I've brought this up about 37 times on this show when reading articles. I hate it when they, like, I guess maybe they have to, for legal reasons, because maybe like the case is open, blah, 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 blah. But when they say like, a woman in class, first class, allegedly. allegedly tried to do. I'm pretty sure she did. Yeah, she did. Yeah, I, I don't get the whole allegedly thing either. But uh, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Um, you know, the bitch about this is, is like they were only in the air maybe an hour. Like Florida to North Carolina, that's not a long trip. They were supposed to go to Washington D.C., but they they didn't make it there. Which, by the way, is put probably like a four hour trip at most. At most, yeah, I've flown so, from New York to Orlando, which was around about four hours. So DC is closer okay. to Florida than so, yeah, probably about three and a half hours, maybe. I'm just making three and a half hours, yeah. Like these, this was supposed to be a simple flight. This woman fucked up everyone's day. That has to mean that she was already drunk before she got I'm on the gonna, plane. I'm going to assume yeah. that, yeah. She, she, she went to uh, what's his nuts? His, uh, um, 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 Guy Fieri's bar and just got loaded up on um, Cabo Wabos, which is uh, I know the Red Rocker, but I'm going to just merge the two together. You you could have got away with that because I have no idea what you're talking about. Sammy Hagar used to have a tequila named Cabo Wabo. <laughs> that that sounds totally up sold there. it for four Real billion classy. dollars. No, but I mean like you you know sold can I have a Casamigos? That sounds classy. Can I have a gabba wabba, please? That sounds oh, like a $5 bottle. It wasn't, it wasn't inexpensive, but it wasn't a cheap bottle. It was, you know, it was right in the middle, but it, it tasted pretty good if you like tequila. If you drink too much of it, do you, do you get the sensation of the gabba wobble wobble where you can't walk straight? The Cabo Wobble Wobble. Probably. Sounds like, oh, it's a new dance crazy <laughs> TikTok. It's, uh, it's what happens when Fozzie Bear drinks too much. Cabo Wobble Wobble. No, nothing. We just talked about Muppets and you don't know Fozzie. We but didn't just talk good. about that's Muppets. Okay. We talked about Sesame Street. The Muppets were a different universe. No, there was no cross. They're not. No, they're all under the same umbrella. It's all Jim Henson's creations. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah, I guess. They are, yeah. but did they ever cross over in the same universe? Yeah, Kermit the Frog. Was he ever on Sesame Street? Yes, quite a bit. Wait, I'm tr- now I'm confused. Who am I thinking of? Okay. Oh, for some reason, 
Fraggle Rock popped into my mind. That, Fraggle that Rock different. is also Jim Henson. What? What didn't Jim Henson do? Quite a, I mean, like, yeah, that's a great question. Like, he's responsible for the Ninja Turtles, Labyrinth, the uh, original uh, The Witches. Like, Jim he Henson had an amazing turtles? career. The first Ninja Turtles, yes, sir. What are you talking about? The, the, the puppets in the movie? Yeah, yeah. The the one from 1990. Uh, wait, now, what was the timeline of that? Did the cartoon come first or did the cartoon come after? The cartoon had been out. The comic book had been out. Okay, the boys so did, had been did out. Jim Henson have anything to do with the cartoon? No. Oh, okay then. All right, well, he but helped. The live out action movie. I'm not giving Jim Henson no. credit for the turtles. The live action movie? Come on. Well, no, yeah, he obviously helped out with the animatronics and the puppets and stuff like that, but his creative mm-hmm. mind, he didn't come up with the turtles. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Just, you're splitting hairs now. That's all. Anyway, Fraggle Rock, Fraggle Rock had a Karen. banging theme song, by the way. Um, Fraggle Rock did have a banging theme song. But yes. So, yes. Florida Karen. Like, what? No one wants again, to be again, we're, we're already. Like, I mean, we pre- even though it's it's not confirmed. So this is this is where we'd have to say she was allegedly off her tits, smashed out of her brains on alcohol, mm. allegedly. So let's just go with that. But like, even then, like what? What did she think was going to happen? When she bangs, trying yeah. to bang the... Did you think the captain was going to go, hello, how may I help you? Oh, he's going to pull something out of his secret stash, like, shh, 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 I got you. I got you here. A couple of airplane shots. There's a little you. Smirnoff. Here, have a shot of Smirnoff. It's fine. Shut up. Shh, shh. I didn't bring enough for everybody. All right? That's my personal wow. stash. I, need, I usually need three of those to get to DC, okay? I'm giving you one. That means I have two left. That means I have two left, Karen. I trade this for some... Meth. Come on. You're 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 drunk on a flight from Florida to what these you definitely have meth on you. Come on. Bend over. Let me get it. Let me get it. You too are too far, sir. Too far. Really? Yeah. Where else are you gonna put right. why am I so orange again? Like if you're watching the audio <laughs> version, I just I'm just I so think you got a little flustered there. Especially right. it's called you out. And you're like, oh my anyway. god, you might have a point. No meth was Maybe allegedly it, found on this carrots. woman, Mike Fish. It's not part of, allegedly, not part of the gimmick. Allegedly, no allegedly was allegedly, allegedly not found on her. She was an alcohol coming out of her eyeballs. That's how drunk she was. Ooh. And allegedly, she had crystal meth in a condom rammed up a butt. Allegedly, she has webbed toes. What? So how does that work with the, the, the right? Okay, so because I imagine, right? You know, mm-hmm. look now I'm so well, she swims right. really much better than anyone else because of the web toes. Oh, maybe, oh, anyway, my cast. No, I'm white again. I'm pale again. Anyway, sorry, audio listeners. I have to call like, you Mike Salmon. Hang on. <laughs> hey. But now, obviously, oh, I was obsessed with this. Now I'm just like staring at myself, slowly changing mm-hmm. color. What the hell is going on? Well, you are a narcissist. Um, so now, so th- th- without going into too much information, just through mm-hmm. life yeah. experiences, I'm aware that ladies, ladies, let's just say ladies have an extra orifice that men do not, you know, sir, so. I mean, and, and desire to know more intensify. <laughs> And one of them, let's just call it the front bottom, is a little bit smoother per entrance than the back bottom. Now, obviously, drug addicts who are men, they don't, they only have one choice. Up the poop hole, there it goes. Are you saying she's got a hairy asshole? No, I'm just wondering. You know, do do women drug smugglers? Do they allegedly she has a? Do they do they say one? Well, I'm not putting it up my butt. And they do they put the the drugs in the virginjin, or do they, they do. look at? Or do they look at it? You know, 
now I can get twice the amount of money and they go both. So if, you, um, if, you're, if you're a female drug addict that likes to fly, hit us up at enjoywafflebox at gmail.com. Let us know. Um, dying to know. Or at WaffleboxPod on Twitter. Just, you know. Also, let me know when you're in town because I won't be. Just do, you'll notice the, the woman with like the sketchy hair like just walking very fragilely. Don't Start. Don't do anything. Anyway, there you go. Beautiful. Congratulations. Oh, did all she just banged on the door to try to get a drink, and now allegedly she is a drug smuggler. Well done, Karen. I want to say- oh no, her name well was done, Tiffany. Her name was Tiffany. And she's only That's 36. Very Florida what are you doing with your life, Tiff? Ooh, Tiffany, the cool aunt. She's younger than me, and she's already been in an article. I haven't been in a news article. Maybe I need to do stuff with my oh, life. You should fix that. Like I've already been in like three of them. Pretty awesome. I'm sure I might have been actually. I remember being in a newspaper once because I I I took photos of a fox that got his head stuck in my car wheel. Oh. And I had to get poor Foxy. I know it became a whole thing. Like I had to, I, I got the RSPCA, like which I don't know what you call over here, you know, because we had the ASPCA. Rules. There we go, because you're American, not royal. Oh, God save the queen. Um, and then they showed up, and they were like, "Well, the head is stuck in a, the wheel. This is above our pay grade." And so then they had to phone the fire brigade. And so I had, I had two people from the RSPCA in my front. And then now I have like four fire brigades who obviously nothing's better to do in the morning. And I'm just standing there like, oh, I need to get to work. <laughs> and so I had to wait for them to jack up the car, get in and remove the wheel from the car so they could take the fox and safely like push its head through. And then they, the RSPCA took the fox away and the fireman left me with a car with three wheels. Fun Let's story. Good luck, mate. Yeah, it's your problem now. We got the fox out. You're on your own, pal. Anyway, mm. speaking of people achieving things with their lives, let's talk about people. My who life. Their ne- their names in a special book about things that haven't been done before, written by apparently a Irish brewery. I still don't know why Guinness have a book of world records, but whatever they do. Anyway. It uh, is to solve good. bar fights. I'll take that. That's law. Boom. That's final. If I had a gavel, I'd bang it down. It's now time for this week's Dumb World Record of the Week. Why? Why? Why would I? Why? 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 Why would you want to do that? Uh, uh, indeed. This week's Dumb World Record takes us to so India, oh. where Indian actor Akshay Kumar broke the Guinness oh. World Record by snapping the most selfies in three minutes. Okay. <sighs> So, so how does that work, right? So, the, so again, on uh, extreme shutter or, or multi, no, multi so shutter. Here's the thing, right? Hmm. All right, break it down. Each selfie had to be taken with a different person, so it'd be him and someone wow. else. Oh shit! So, so it's him. Okay. Someone else stand next to him. He goes, selfie. And he did the most in three minutes. Could you guess, just using the box? 90. That contains your brain. You're going 90? 90 selfies. Akshay Kumar is now the proud holder of the world record for most selfies snapped in three minutes at 184, which is 
just wow. a smidgen over one every second. How did he do this, you may ask? So what he did, right? So he had 240 people split into two lines, 120 each. And so basically, one would step in from the left. They would fuck off. From the right, fuck off. Oh. And just go, 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 go. Now, this is hilarious, right? So you're just thinking, right? Just selfie, selfie, selfie. So Kumar took 209 photos in the allotted time. However, 20... Wait, I'm trying to do the maths here. 25? 25 of them were disqualified. Too blurry. Due to, due to poor quality. There we go. So Guinness oh, wow. is like, fuck that. If you're going to do this, I want I want crystal clear. Give me HD selfies, bitch. Because otherwise you just go... So he successfully broke the record That's of 184 amazing. selfies, beating British man James Smith, which is a... That is, if, if Chef's kiss. If there was ever an award for the most British person's name, James Smith. How generic is that, man? Good <laughs> Lord. I bet he works in a library. Um, he had a previous record of 168. Good for yeah. you, guy. Also, yeah. it's nice that you found that many people. Like, well, it, we, he, we he's an actor. He says he's an. He just... says, no, it says Indian actor Akshay Kumar. So, mm. I think it might have been like a, a premiere or something like that, and it was like organized and shit. Someone still had to organize. Like, okay, 120 of you stand over there. And 120 of you stand over there, and we're just going. We're doing like a zipper mode movement here, kids. Just get in and out, in and out, in and out. Imagine being one of the 31 people. Like, that, like imagine being one of the 31 idiots that showed up for this and didn't end up getting your photo taken, or being one of the ones who did get his photo taken. Yeah. It was just <laughs> freeze frame. That's a reference. I'm, a, I'm impressed by this one. Uh, you know, these are usually just kind of meh. Some of these are I mean, funny. I mean, very, very the, few have impressed me like this one. The how? The, I guess what's the word I'm trying to look for? The uh, the, the the nuts Allegedly. and bolts of it. The uh, <laughs> the <laughs> the organization, I guess, of yes. this is yeah. pretty impressive. This was a team effort. But still, does this man, Akshay Kumar, does he, like, at the end of a hard working day, does he snuggle into his bed and look at the wall with the friend? Like, oh, you know what? No one's taken more selfies in three minutes than me. Good night. Like, who gives a shit? That's all I'm saying. I'm saying pretty dumb, pretty dumb. Anyway, still to come on this week's Waffle Ball episode 87. My god, we're 13 away or 12 more, 13 more from the 13. Centurion episode. Where should we, should we just for episode 100? Should we dress up as Roman Centurions? No, that's a bad idea. I think still it means Centennial, but but still, and no, we should not dress up as Romans. Whatever. Just ruin my fun. You're not even my real dad. Still to come, we are talking <laughs> cocaine bear. Feel good story and more. So stick around after this short break. When you've got Schlotsky's on the brain... There's not much room for anything else. It's now time for the middle of the show quiz. Hey, welcome back to Pop Box. Oh, I'm a little bit dizzy. Episode 87. 87. This is the show, so what a time to be alive and this will be the perfect time to play the middle of the show quiz now if you've never listened or watched before where the 
bloody hell have you been? What time do you call this? So if you've got a good excuse, I ask Kush five questions about a topic that's been mentioned on the show or will be mentioned on this episode. Obviously, the whole idea of it is to get at least three out of five or if not five out of five clean sweep. After each question, if he gets the question correct, he hears this noise. Which makes him so happy. However, if he gets the question wrong, he hears this noise. Which makes him so sad. Oh, look at him so sad. Look at that sad little face. Give him a cuddle. He may need a hug. Nice and simple. Five questions. Gone. Wait, let me did I? Let's see if I can do this on the. Do the. Nope, uh, nope, I, I forgot to add the tense music. Never mind. Right, we're not working tense. We're not working tense. We're... Do, 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 do. Right, tense music. Okay, question number one, Kush. You ready? Number one. I haven't even told you what this quiz is about. So this is about, based on, like, this is cocaine bear related, but it's basically a quiz about the people in the movie. Oh, that's pretty vague. But I think it's, yeah, we'll see. Question number one. Kerry Russell, who is in this hmm. movie... She starred Cheers. as a Russian spy for six mm. seasons in which TV show? The Americans or the K. Crack. Question number two. These ones are the easy ones. This is getting you warmed up. Just lure you into a false sense of security. Question number two. O'Shea Jackson Jr. is the son of... Of which famous rapper? That'd be uh, O'Shea Jackson Sr., a.k.a. Ice Cube. Spin it ice. No, it was, it was Ice Cube. It was Ice Cube. Mine was just giant. Isn't that funny? He's white. That's a joke. Um, I'm going to cut, cut you, motherfucker. Question number three. Now we're getting toughy. Jesse Tyler Ferguson, mm-hmm. whom some may know as he was in uh, the TV show Modern Family. True. He was a guest judge on which reality competition show? Hmm. See, I don't follow any of these shows. So, like, no, I, I need just... to write. This is where Wikipedia helped me out. Mm. Yeah, this is where. I, yeah, wow. Especially um, this one. I definitely don't I'm watch just... this one. Jesus, is this uh, the 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 best home makeover? I could see it though. I could see it. I could see where it's going from. But no, this is he, yeah. apparently he was he was a guest judge on. So you think you can dance? Question mark. Okay. Yeah. I'm... Can he? Is he a dancer? Yeah. Can he dance? Oh, no. I guess no he idea. is. Well, he has to be, right? You'd hope so. He'd hope or so. has a strong opinion, at least. <laughs> <laughs> Question number four. Matthew Reese Evans, who mm-hmm. star of Kerry Russell on The Americans, mm. is from which, which country of Earth? Hmm... United mm. Kingdom. That's not a country, so I'm going to ask you to be more specific. Mm. Great Britain. Still a collection of countries. England. Most... No, it's Wales. He's from Wales. Wales. Oh, I don't know. Be a fun fact, just in case you know. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned it before. Great Britain is the island which contains England, Scotland, and Wales. And the United Kingdom is the the, the the joining of Northern Ireland to that group. So it's the full title is the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. That's what's on my passport. Only people in Southern Ireland care about that detail. <laughs> don't yeah, don't don't. If you ever go to Republic of Ireland, don't 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 mention that they're British or anything. They will you will die. They I wouldn't dream of like it. That. Um, question number five. It's decided. Number five. Decider. This is tie banger. 
in the true story of Cocaine Bear, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how much? Now, this is I'm gonna. I'll give you. You don't have to get exact. I'll give you that. I'll be okay. fair. But how much cocaine was absorbed into the bear's bloodstream at the time of its death? So I'm not a cocaine The answer is in grams. Guy. I'll give you that. It's, it's in um, grams. As I've mentioned several times, I'm not a cocaine guy. And as mentioned several times on the microdose, I've only smoked it one time, and that was an accident. Well, that's one um, more time than me. So I don't... Yeah, I have no... Big drug addict. This is an intervention. You know, this whole podcast has been a ruse. <laughs> we finally got you. We finally <laughs> caught you. What? Yep, in the other room, you'll see your oh bag is packed. There is a car Mom? outside waiting for you. And How it's going to take you to a, a, to, a, to a drug center. Oh, no. Go away. Go away. <laughs> Go away. I've, I've Go written away. a letter. <laughs> hey, Kush. We're here because we love you, man. Um, Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So come on. Come on, you cokehead. How many grams? Oh, uh, a... so I don't know what that, that means. I'm going to say a kilo because it's not grams, but it's all I know. That's the only measurement I know, and I don't know what that is. A kilo? I, honestly, I don't even know how many grams are in a kilo, so I'm going to assume you got that wrong. No, apparently. So, yes. Uh... Um, True story. The, I mean, we'll get into this into the movie, but the bear did ingest like a fuck ton of cocaine a lot of however cocaine. i understand it had like 400 attacks at once by the time that they, 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 they did the coroner's shit and whatever it's actually uh only three to four grams of cocaine had been absorbed into the bloodstream and that was enough to get him I don't know what that is damn well that was fun that was a fun way to end the quiz so you uh Lose. Maybe next week. Maybe next week. Although someone could very much fact check and just be like, oh, yeah, four, four grams is a kilo. I don't think it is, but if it is. The referee's decision is final. That's like How most boxing matches. How many grams are in a kilogram? That's it. Oh, that's. that's... I'm actually really feeling stupid now. Of course, I should, I should have known that because it's, it's a thousand grams into a kilogram. Jesus, idiot! So it definitely grams. wasn't a kilo. Well, definitely wasn't. You're a becoming kilo. Americanized. Anyway, well, just before we uh, kind of get into the next segment, which is a trapdoor segment, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to the Good Pods um, app because I don't know how many people use that app to listen to podcasts. So these numbers could be very insignificant. I don't know, but I've got uh, an email um, to say that Waffle Box has made the top listener charts on good pods. So we oh, are again, That's great. we are number 88 in top 100 indie comedy podcasts. Okay. I'll take it. Number 14 14 in the top 100 improv charts look at us improving that's crazy yes, and. improving guys <laughs> um and then yes, when, and. It, when it comes to indie improv number 10 number 10 i mean i'll take I, again i don't know there could be five people on that app i have no idea so it might not be that impressive but Whatever, top ten, top ten. I'll take it, top ten. So if you are listening okay. to us on Good Pods, shout out to you for giving us. Thank you. This is like the first meeting. first measurement we've had in a while. Not ever, but in a while. Like I know, once upon a time, we beat the "It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia" podcast and the That's office right. office ladies podcast. Yeah, those like... bitches. <laughs> Suck it, office ladies. Learn how to do no, a podcast. That's sexual harassment. Let's. Uh, hey, thanks everybody. Sincerely. 
So I just pulled uh, up I the chart. I hope you keep listening. Right? Pulled yeah, up the chart, right? Up. There's and there's one pot. Well, I mean, there's there's a few podcasts above us. Obviously, nine at least. Um, and number two in the charts, give give a free uh free free plug, um, is the because fuck you. That's why podcast. Okay. I might have to, I might check that out. I might check that out. It's very aggressive. Indie comedy. Who's who's above us in indie comedy? I bet Fuck the guy, my I work think life. Um, Scott Adams. There's a lot Fuck of very aggressive I be podcasters. I could be on Fuck My Work Life. Like I, yeah, those the cubicle crime years diner. Aged me. That sounds fun. Yeah. The crime diner. It's true crime stuff. Um, I've never heard of that show, by the way. So I could be wrong. Beard Owl. That weird owl. That's, okay. Uh, uh, okay. I mean, I mean, they they could have done better with that, I guess. I mean, this is all indie stuff, so you know. Yeah. This is, yeah. We're we're in a fraternity of our own that we don't even know about. That's a porn stash podcast. Oh, that could be the, a fun podcast. WTFDYW, which I'm assuming is what the fuck do you want? So, <gasps> oh, all right. This one, right. This this is last one, right? Or well, this one, one called "Fuck It, I'm 40. You know? But this one, I am definitely. I could be on the "Fuck It, I'm 40. Right. This story is so. It's a podcast by Dawn Brody. I'm definitely after after this recording. I'm definitely trying to find her on Twitter because I like the sound of her podcast. It's called. Is that she? It's it's she. It's a she. I can see a picture. Okay. Okay. I should look. But oh, she, I mean, in the thumbnail, she looks. She's like she's buying a nail. I don't know if she's doing it. I don't know if she's trying to do it seductively. <laughs> For the audio or... listeners, Mike Fish had to lean all yeah, the way into his screen. It's, I, I'm imagining it's a tiny thumbnail. So yeah, move it's, on, it's, move it's on, not the biggest. On. But anyway, but the name of the podcast is Hilf. History I'd like to fuck. Oh. Ooh. I'm definitely checking out that podcast. I just, yeah, that's the most interesting of all the names uh, and, and uh, what they could be. And she has yeah, a I've history degree. She should. It'd be weird if she didn't. She has a history degree and an unfiltered sense of humor. Okay. Well, I'll be a judge of that, Dawn. But anyway, yeah, I'll be checking that one out. Anyway, it's now mm. time to get back on track. It's now time for this week's Trapdoor segment. We're already over an hour into this. Jesus Christ. Yeah, man. Now, this, it's, this uh, trapdoor, this trapdoor is a special trapdoor because this is the first trapdoor that we also have a viewer's choice because a couple of days ago, I put a poll on our Twitter and got people to vote which of these four people should go down the trapdoor. So, Kush, obviously, as usual, you're going to be pick and then we'll just find out whether you match up with the listeners so okay how this works i think i missed a tweet but good how this don't no no peeking no if anything it's good that you didn't see it because now you're not going to be swayed so mm -hmm. how this works is i give four four names four celebrity names and kush has to decide which one gets sent down the trap door out of existence because god damn it this world is too populated he gets to choose but as always he must show his working so the four names this week we have stumbled across the letter t so we have taylor swift we have tom cruise we have timothy chalamet and we have Tina Fey. So again, for those playing at home, we have Taylor Swift, Tom Cruise, Timothy Chalamet, or Tina Fey. Which one <laughs> of those four 
has you know they've outstayed their welcome quite frankly and needs to be booted off this spinning ball Good for shit. some reason i wrote down tom cruise with an h in tom i don't know why i did that but okay by the way tom cruise not on the list tom cruise is not going to be left be, be taken from this more mortal coil from this blue ball from this giant rock floating around the sun not not because of the trap door it's because he's going to do a stunt that was so outrageous so over the top that just that was it that was it you know and, now he'd break his ankle but make, he would survive somehow he i mean he can break his ankle but this is he's gonna break his neck on whatever stunt takes tom cruise from this uh from this planet of ours uh, tom cruise is a fantastic actor and of course we only want to see more of what this man can do i personally want to see him in a film with jackie chan and maybe johnny knoxville I don't know, but these are all people uh, who do their Johnny own Knoxville will be his like estranged brother. And he'd be like, how the fuck are Ooh. these two? Because, because even though they don't look alike, yeah. if they were in a movie together as brothers, you'd be like, oh, I'll buy it. Yeah. Yeah. It was, or they got different moms or something. Like, you know, they're, they're half brothers. Oh, they definitely have the same dad. 100% same dad. Mm hmm. So, Tom Cruise, you are safe. Until you're not, sir. But you're not going away on this trap door. Taylor Swift. <sighs> Don't cross Taylor Swift. She is a gangster. I know a lot of people think she's just a pop icon princess or whatever. And, you know, weighs, Swifties weighs like crazy five ones. pounds. Don't mess with the Swifties. Swifties are the crazy ones. But Taylor Swift is crazier. This is a woman who... Oh, oh I hate that song. Someone, some some morning radio shock jock or something in, in the Midwest, one of the flyover states, grabbed her butt during a photo op. Not the Why coolest thing to do, but guess what? Why would you do that, Mike Fish? I don't know. There's no reason for it. But guess Never what? Never going to end well. When he what, did, what did he own think? up to it. Again, what did he think was going to happen? Did he think to, to just this radio host grabs Taylor Swift's He's, ass? What did he think? Was she going to? Did he think she was going to turn around and go, Oh, no one's ever grabbed me like that before. Will you be my new boyfriend? Fuck He's apparently idiot. done it before, so he apparently thought he could get away with it. However, Taylor Swift sued him for not hundreds of dollars, not thousands of dollars, not even millions of dollars. She got a team of lawyers that I imagine was like over five individuals, very expensive individuals, and sued this man for $1 so that she could get the, his testimony on the record and prove whether or not he was a liar. And by the way, oh, just she to won, embarrass him. Um, just to embarrass him. Taylor Swift is a gangster. And I would right, never she's, do she's anything gone up in my to cross her. For that. I'll agree with that. It's just, okay, here's my main problem with Taylor Swift. I'll be honest, right? You have a problem with Taylor Swift, sir? I, I have a problem with Taylor Swift. You might not want to have that thought. No, no, no. And it's not the problem I have with Taylor Swift isn't Taylor Swift's fault. It's, it's, I know it sounds weird, but here's the problem because her songs are too goddamn catchy, right? But the, those are the songs that even if you don't like those songs, if you hear them once, they're, they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're in there, right? But because mm -hmm. they're so goddamn catchy, obviously she's a very mainstream, famous singer. And so, mm -hmm. long story, at some point during my day, I am forced to listen to like um, Z100, like the mainstream commercial radio stations. Sure, the top 40 and station. So I hear her songs at least. 10 times every hour and it was like oh this this i i need quite a privilege i need what a, a pleasure you oh. should be describing this as it's me hey with me and this isn't isn't this this thing about what i'm about to say isn't a taylor swift thing this is this is a pop thing now it's, sorry i'm i'm derailing this whole segment but whatever 
this is like therapy to me right so the whole mainstream music thing is at, at some point they have to just repeat the same bit over and over and over again in a slightly different way before they kick the beat back in and like for this one where it's like it's me hi i'm the problem it's me and then it goes and then she, then she goes yeah, hi it's me hi i'm the problem it's me and it breaks down even further she's like it's me hi i'm so, oh i get it you think you're a problem okay can we just move on move our lives please god <laughs> Swifties, I do not condone Mike Fish's opinion. Mike Fish's opinion are his and his alone. And uh, I'm going to ask you to go merciful on him. Just, just he's having a bad day. But that's that's evident. Don't. Uh, I nearly died in a snowstorm. I, I, I need him, by the Swifties. way. Leave I need him, by the way, guys. At least for thirty a, more he's episodes. Okay. He's an okay because... guy. I promise you, he's an okay guy. Oh, could you? Mate? I have to, my, if if for whatever reason. We ended this show before we hit 100. My OCD would like go into overdrive. It would dry. I wouldn't be able to live with myself. We have to do at least, at least 100. Okay. At least, if not, we're going to get to 100. I promise you that, Flair. But I want to be Tina Fey. Tina Fey. One of the funniest women who've ever been on Saturday Night Live. You are not going anywhere. I love 30 Rock. All right, you know, I didn't see many of your things on Saturday Night Live because I just aged out of that. Like, it, guess what? I, I, I had been staying up past midnight way longer after the age of 15 than you, uh, when you were on the show. I know, right, again. I'm, I'm, I'm spe special. But uh, Tina Fey, you're a funny lady. You're, you're, you're quite easy on the eye as well. I would hate to see anything happen to you. You're not going anywhere. That leaves us with Timothy Chalamet. And this was a hard one. Timothy Chalamet, she said. you're a good actor. You, uh, I, I haven't seen everything you're in, but everything I've seen you in, you're pretty great in it, dude. However, uh, you're 85 was pretty pounds, bad, soaking wet. But he wasn't the bad one in Doom, but that whole movie just made me hate everyone that was in it. No, I didn't. Uh, I actually enjoyed the new Dune. Not important. Um, you... You weigh him just a little bit more than Mike Fish, and we can't have you taking up that mass on this big blue rock. So, just it's this was not an easy decision to come to, sir. Okay, and trust me that I went through all my options, but this is where we are. We will, the people will not forget you, Timothy Chalamet, and we thank you for your service. Au revoir. And with 50% of the votes, the people voted for Timothy Chalamet. Ah, ah. Double whammy. Double whammy. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I mean, me and, I feel like me and the people, while we came to the same decision, have two different motives. Uh, I, it's, it's literally just, eh, you're the newest kid. Everyone else has done more. Where do we go next week? What's what's uh, uh, A B C D U? You is it you? You. I don't know who we would do for you. Usain Uma Bolt. Uma Thurman. Um, 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 the guy who who directs all the shitty video game movies. U Uwe Boll. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Well, it yeah, might be Uwe Boll. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> However, he he will actually fight his film critics, and I love that. So it might not be TBD. TBD. Well, this one's yeah, definitely next week's going to be an interesting one because on my source, I go to one website, but you know, to stroll peruse these people and celebrities uh, with ooh, yeah, ooh. the the celebrities beginning with the name you. The name you, the letter you. Number one, Usain Bolt. Number two, Ulysses S. Grant. <laughs> oh. This might actually make things easier. 
Wow, I'm because yeah, you say yeah. bold, it definitely ain't going down the trap door. I'm not crazy. Yeah, this one's gonna be interesting. Oh, Uzo Uduba. Did you ever watch Orange and New Black? No. Apparently, her name begins with Uncle Cracker. Oh, if if he's if Uncle Cracker's oh he was like a a rapper, quote unquote. Was a rapper. Uh, he might still be a rapper. I don't know, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Anyway, he can, it's... he can still be once was a rapper. <laughs> he did have like one he did um do you was you watching wrestling in two thousand and one? What part of two thousand and one? Because I I picked once upon a time I picked up the USA Today at the hotel I was working at and they went Vince McMahon, CEO and chairman of WWE uh, WWF has WWF purchased too. the WCW and that was like August. I no, that say. was that was and right that's before. I was like, oh my god, that was right before WrestleMania. So that was around March, April. Time. Before WrestleMania seventeen, then no. But I saw WrestleMania 17. Oh, okay. Because that, that was when X Puck, Sean Walkman, okay. shout out to him, one sure. of my favorite of all time, great wrestler. Um, mm-hmm. He was in a group called X Factor. It was him, Just Incredible, and Albert. Okay. That would have been a fun. T- Albert's, Albert, really? Mm. You got two cruiserweights and the super heavyweight? and their theme song was performed by uncle cracker there's fun okay Uh, i wouldn't be surprised if i had this with that on that once upon a time and i know you hate well no so what they so it wasn't a song written specifically for them they took one of his uh, an uh, uh, uncle cracker song right but it was it, and but the editing was super because they were bad they were heels right and so the song sense. goes i remember it's this day what's this now like 22 years later so at some point the song goes i never get what i ever wanted and now i get my back and i know you hate that fact right that's just part of it i know you hate that fact right Mm-hmm. But what I they feel did, like I'm hearing the melody in my head right now. Right, they they just dubbed someone going X Factor, right? So it sounded like I know you hate X Factor, but and it's like, oh, that's genius. Small little note. Okay, you, there's a little remix. Check it out, Jed. Do, I honestly would not Spectre be surprised if WWF Cracker got it licensed to put it on one of their theme song CDs. I mean that happened. Like they, they had Method it, it Man, never Snoop Dogg, and 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 the East Side Boys. Uh, all, all WWF Aggression. That CD was yeah. amazing. Great CD. Run DMC Fun doing CD, DX. What still to, to yeah. this day my favorite wrestling theme song. Oh, so okay. Good. So good. So good. So good. Anyway, let's move things along because we need to talk about. A crack, a cocaine bear in this week's Kush's movie. A review. Kush's movie review. What happens when you mix bears with cocaine? Well, let's find out in this new movie called Cocaine Bear. Over to you, Kush. Cocaine Bear. Not just the name of a fella down in San Francisco's Castro District. Not just the name of the cool mum in Essex, London. Cocaine Bear is based on a real story um, where drug smugglers flew over uh, the southern part of uh, the United States, and just threw out kilos of cocaine, and well, someone's parachute didn't open, 
And regardless of if that meant anything, a bear got into some of the product. And as we discussed tonight, he ate less than like four grams. No, 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 no. Less than four grams was um, absorbed into his bloodstream. All right, that's a whole he, other stat. Yeah. But whatever. So, but okay, but I don't know if it's mentioned in the movie, but I'll mention it now. So basically, this bear, which was around about five hundred pound bear, it's a big boy, big boy bear, mm-hmm. right? And they did say, the coroner said that when they cut him open, his stomach was there was nothing in there but cocaine. It was just <laughs> so much cocaine. <laughs> But only three to four grams of it. Is, but damn. Yeah, only three got to four grams actually stream. got absorbed into the bloodstream to kill him. But yeah, his stomach was just packed of cocaine. Jesus Christ. Well, unlike so he had the that munches. historical fact, this bear goes on a murder spree. And it's all over the trailers. It's got a banging soundtrack. It's a lot of fun. This is a hard R, by the way. It's there's a lot of blood. And I always gore get nervous around a severed someone. limbs. It always makes it awkward when you're around a hard R. Well, you're you're definitely around a hard R on this one. It is a delightful 95 minutes. As Ooh. you as often, most times we talk about length being the biggest problem in this film. If we have to bring it up, I would shave off five minutes of it but this movie is a perfect length this movie could only disappoint i believe we saw the trailer for it in october maybe november and everybody jumped on board like i need to see this movie this is going to be the event of thankfully february february 2023 we're going to be blessed with this gem and we got it and if it did disappoint it's a sliver of a hair of a fraction of a thumbnail that disappointed me like i left this movie still entertained still in a great mood i wanted more from this there's absolutely gonna be a sequel it um a sequel 23 million oh i already got plans for the sequel sir i'll get to that in a little bit here but uh this oh, so movie the sequel is, is your you're, you're planning to do in a sequel there is so there isn't I'm already planning on a sequel i'll get Please. to that in a second i promise you it's going to do I'll different animals. Second, I promise you. No, no, no. From the, from the makers of bear. Cocaine Bear comes Heroin Hedgehog. Hmm. That's good alliteration, but no. Uh, the folks at the asylum who make the Marowasters are you feeling familiar with that? Those are the guys who did Sharknado. They got a whole bunch of other shit. They've the already Canada come out with Meth Gator. Meth Gator. So they're, they're, don't worry about that, Mike Fish. If you want more animals on drugs, the asylum has your back this weekend if you can't make it to the theater. However, this is uh, written by Jimmy Warden. I don't know who he is, but this is directed by Elizabeth Banks. She what? is not been on a uh, not been on a winning streak the last couple of movies. She she did the pitch two of the three pitch perfect films. And those made a lot of money because I don't know why, but they did. Because people like did... singing in movies. It's annoying. Okay. That's a better answer than I had. Thank you very much. Um, she did the Power Rangers reboot, and no one gave a shit about that. And she did the Charlie's Angels re-reboot, and that got flogged hard. I honestly don't know if it was a good movie, but it, it didn't look like anything I wanted to see. But she needed this win. I'm glad that she got it. This movie starts Carrie Russell. She, uh, she, Carrie Russell is a woman who, as you mentioned earlier tonight, was in a TV series called The Americans. Before that, she was in a series called Felicity. She was actually in The Rise of Skywalker as a voiceover of Woman in Mysterious Mask. I doubt she was ever even on set, but that's, that's what happened there. Aldrin Ehrenreich. He uh, also in a Star Wars movie. He played Han Solo in the Solo uh, prequel bio 
pick or whatever. You remember Solo, Mike, right? Yeah, 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 yes, 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 yes. Yeah, he's that dude. O'Shea Jackson Jr. And then this is one of four posthumous films for Ray Liotta. Um, Ray Liotta is the best thing in this movie. You wish there was more Ray Liotta, uh, but it's it's just a perfect dose. Like he's got a great look. He's got fantastic hair. He's got the perfect outfit. At one point, he uh, rifle butts a bear cub, and you're like, oh my god, this guy's dastardly. Like, <laughs> but you just you you love that he's that big of a sleaze ball, and that's where Cocaine Bear goes from the villain to the protagonist. Like, Cocaine Bear is protecting her cubs. Her cubs are also high on cocaine. I don't want to spoil nothing for nobody, but it's it becomes a whole thing. And because the whole plot is cocaine is missing. Very important people are missing that cocaine. Colombians, Mike Fish, are missing that cocaine. And that's why, despite the fact that in real life, Cocaine Bear died, Cocaine Bear is right for a sequel and i imagine our co colombian brothers in drugs and other narcotics make a trip out to the swamps of georgia looking for their missing cocaine and come across cocaine bear and cocaine bears cubs and at some point something has to be done and that is only like thankfully cocaine bear finds another missing brick of cocaine and gets into it and just and all of a sudden you hear the Popeye theme in the background and it just cocaine bear just hulks up and just wipes out all the Colombian drug dealers and that's that that movie's coming out in 2024 that's that's actually already been a thing but but that's the movie I'm writing spoiler alert so wait 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 uh, co- Cocaine Bear, uh, I wish I could give it a 4 out of 5, but I have to give it a 3 out of 5. But it's still an entertaining film. I wish I had seen it with a crowd. Will I see it again? Absolutely. I'll be happy to watch it on some streaming device in the next three months. It is a good time. Is it better than Idris Elba's Beast? No. But it is a lot more fun. Mike Fish, you have a question. Please carry for it. Yeah, yeah, sorry, Mike Fish, Daily Waffle Box. Um, so you're what you're saying in this movie, not to be all right, my the answer to this question could be a spoiler, I guess, technically, but I don't think we have to worry about spoilers in this movie. Does does the bear die at the end? No. What? (laughs) All right, okay, that's fair enough. That could be a franchise then, I guess. Yeah. Who came bear in New York? Should be the villain of the movie, okay? And because it's mauling regular human beings, Cocaine Bear is the hero. Cocaine Bear becomes the hero because it's a very manipulative film. She's protecting her cubs, and then once Ray Liotta hits that little son of a bitch with a fucking with a rifle, you're like, oh no, oh no! Now we have to protect Cocaine Bear from Ray Liotta. Oh no. And and we do. And um guess what? It's it's open for a sequel. And I predict the Colombians are coming back for their cocaine, Mike Fish. I'd be want, weird if they didn't. I want to see some kind of MCU type thing where yeah, it's just a oh. bunch of different animals on different drugs, and then at some point they all find each other in some mega movie, yeah. and they just yeah. go nuts. The like cocaine, cocaine bear, bear cinematic universe. The heroin hedgehog. The heroin hedgehog is great. Marijuana mouse. Marijuana marsupial. Oh, um, it's just a, it's just an Australian kangaroo that just just just. Yeah, man. Oh. Crack rabbit. Kangaroos are normally fast, but because he smokes the weed, he just he just hops along. Jumping crack rabbit. But, um, but, no, it's all about alliteration. Man. Jack rabbit. Isn't that a thing? 
championship rabbit. A jack rabbit is a thing, but a, a... jet rabbit, yeah. crack rabbit. Yeah. No crack rabbit. Um, whatever, whatever, whatever drugs. Uh, the L, the LSD Lima, an LSD Llama, Ooh. LSD Llama, LSD Llama, and it's just, just always being at people and just kicking shit at everyone. Oh. When it's just like the Infinity Stones, the gauntlet, it needs to come together. These five drugged up animals are here to fuck shit up. Make it so. Make I'm into it. it. So. I'm into the Cocaine Bear Cinematic Universe. Make it so. Bring so it Cocaine Bear, three out of five, but I, I'm so, it's a strong three. It's a fun movie, I guess. Not 95 minutes. It's a fun movie. I enjoyed Watch the it. hell out of it, dude. Like I was grab a drink. If, if I had to be disappointed, fine. it's literally just like it's it's this much. Like it's it's Jesus Christ. I don't know if I can see through this. Like that's how much that's how disappointed I was. Like five take five minutes out of this movie. It's a better movie. But it's five minutes out of a 95 minute movie. It's fine. Go see it. Uh it, but at this point you'll you'll need to see it on streaming. That's gonna be in three months. Take it out. All right. Let's wrap up the show. Let's uh, let's make sure we're all feeling this good about track. ourselves. It's the middle of the week. It's hump day. The weekend's almost here. You got this. You got this. Unless... <sighs> oh, I nearly sneezed into the microphone. That could have been bad. Um... No, don't, don't sneeze in the microphone. No, I tried to hit. I hit, I tried to hit mute, but then I was too far gone, and I was already. I, I, mean, I couldn't hit it, but luckily I helped myself. Right, we're still good. We're good. Are you able to conceal your sneeze? You're like, like that. You have to. You have to go all the way off camera. I get it. I'm back. I'm back. No. So well, I've seen too imagine? many espionage and spy movies where like the, the guy is sneaking around and. If you're looking at the bad guys, usually Nazis over the crate, but the, the crates are dusty, so it goes, <gasps> <gasps> and all of a sudden, just Nazis are shooting. I'm like, oh my god, ah, run, bitch! Um, well, I'm just worried about I, like... I Because of those movies, I learned how to sneeze without sneezing. And by the way, the pressure on your eyes is not good. It's not a good. It's not a good feeling. But you okay? No, I was worried if I'm going to sneeze and just go into the camera. Yeah. Right into your, right your armpit. Right into your now, elbow. There you go. Okay, right, let's, there. Right, let's go. Right, before this becomes a thing. um, It's now time to end the show on this week's Feel Good Story of the Week. Story I've ever heard in my entire life. That's insane. Can I hear it again? Uh, yeah, yeah. And you didn't mute your microphone this time. I'm proud of you, Chris. Thank you. This it, week it happens sometimes. It doesn't. This week's week. feel good story comes to us from the great state of Texas. Oh my so, God! Leave me to those asses more. Texas. Be really good audio for those with the AirPods in. My fist. That evil snake from Jungle Book. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh my god, I'm dying already. Maybe I'm not sick. Um. So yes. So oh no, everyone loves a dog, but no, oh my god, this dog went missing. Oh no, what happened to the poor baby? So a dog went missing from her Texas home was found two days later. Whew. The end. No, not the end. Right. So basically, guys. Sorry, I'm going to have to. Oh my God, my nose. Um, so, ba- so Bailey, this dog, Bailey, what a cute little name, named obviously by a person that loves alcohol. Have you ever had a Bailey's? Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you like a Bailey's? Bailey's is okay. Yeah. So, so basically, Bailey was a rescue dog from the Animal Rescue League and was adopted by a lovely couple. Oh, that's so nice. And then she, mm-hmm. they took the dog and they drove the dog 
10 miles to their new home. Then, oh, oh, spaghetti, oh, the dog vanishes. The dog escapes from the house and goes missing. Hmm. Fast forward two days later, one of the staff members of the uh, American Rescue League gets a little ding dong on their phone. It's their ring doorbell. A weird hand motion there, but okay. Ding dong. This is the, this is the, for those watching. This is the light emitting from the phone when you know you get those obnoxious notifications when you're trying to sleep. Yeah. And it's like oh, ding dong, and the light just looks like it's oh. so. Anyway, ring ring doorbell goes off. And it's like two o'clock in the morning. What the fuck? What's going on? What, who's is someone trying to break in to the dog shelter? Huh. So she opens up the ring doorbell, opens up the camera, and there is Bailey staring into the doorbell. So Bailey was basically like, fuck that. I'm not going. I don't like this. I want to go home. So she escaped from her new home, walked 10 miles, which took the dog two days, and then got home and rang the doorbell. So I'm gonna sniff again. Okay. Um. So yeah. So bless. So she. Um. What was it? Shelter founder Loretta Hyde. Um. Went at one forty-two in the morning. Bailey returned home, and so the staff shelter received an alert on their ring doorbell. She slept so hard that night. That quote mm. kind of was like, "How do you sleep hard?" Like you sleep well, mm-hmm. sleep heavy. I could see. No, I get it. She slept hard. Um, the whole night. The next morning, she was like, "You can serve my breakfast over there. I'll get it in a minute. I'm still resting." So she went three days without food and water. She, I'm sure she found some food and water. She's a dog. She probably you know found something anyway, and she was making up for a rest. Eventually, Bailey was reunited with her new family. And I'm guessing they put extra locks on the door and she didn't ever going to be that out again. <laughs> but yeah. But how, how, how amazing is that? 10 miles. It's fantastic. This dog was like, I know where I'm going. Peace out. It's amazing that the original family got their dog back. Especially, again, how did it end up missing? It just went out the door and just what got caught by the dog catcher it or? just said it went missing so it's not much it just so went missing. escaped right. or whatever no i mean but yeah there, there it is some back, kind of... it didn't escape it it, it got caught which means it got caught i mean as opposed to it, it escaped like it wasn't fleeing for its life it came well, back to the its home so no, it, no. it got caught no, so so it lived at the rescue shelter. Mm-hmm. People... The rescue shelter caught it. Sure. And then someone adopted the dog. Copy that. Took the dog to their home, which wasn't the rescue shelter, and was like, right. this is your new home. We love you. More, more, more. Do you want a toy? This is your new bed. Ah, la, 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 mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. the dog was like, and that was a chance this. for his dog to escape. Fuck this, I'm going back to the animal shelter. And so, do, 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 do. wait, the dog went back to the animal shelter? Yes. Wow. So, Holy yeah, shit. he traveled 10 miles over two days, went back to the animal shelter, walked up to the ring doorbell, and rang the ring doorbell. Okay, like, I thought it went back, back in, bitch. Home, home, home. But no. Okay. Wow. Well, oh. So Did it's good in that it, it? it was missing. And what? What'd you say? That's weird. It would go back to prison. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Some people, you know, they like, you know, they can't take it in the real world. And That's it's why they read from Very quickly. Very quickly. Jesus. Yeah, like I feel bad for the that fo- those folks that adopted it. Did they, they get must the feel dog like back? this dog fucking hates us? This dog hates us, exactly. But the feel good part is that dog returned safe because it's from the Safe-ish. streets. I know my way around the streets, boy. And it took some. Is there any drugs that begin with D? 
Um, yes. Ketamine canine. No? Sure. Okay, it doesn't work. Dopamine? Dopamine dog? Is dopamine a... No. Oh, no, am I just making that up? Dopamine is... Dopamine's a category, but it's not a drug. Well, there you go. No dogs in our new movies. Anyway, shout out to that dog. Bailey. But no in the street. Good for you, Bailey. Welcome, welcome back. All right. I'm going to go soon blow my nose. Um, but blow your nose. before we wrap up this show, we obviously got to do some plugs. You can follow us, of course, at WaffleBoxPOD on Twitter and Instagram and even on Facebook if you are over the age of 40. Um, I am at only Mike Fish. He's at okay, up- boomer. underscore Hayes. Uh, he also does some podcasts um, at the Bosnet family. Kush, one of the friends and family, the Syrup Squad, got to look forward to if they go to bosnet.family in the next seven days. Mike here does number 154. Coming out this Friday, return guest Bob Calhoun, author of The Murders That Made Us. He's got a podcast called Old Movies for Young Stoners. And they, uh, he, he and I talk about cocaine bear a little further. So check that out. So, so what you're saying is you, you, you use this show as kind of the warm up act. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, man. Wow. Wow. Just by the fact that I recorded it two days ago. Wow. Anyway. So yeah, check that out. Go to Bosnet Dog Family. Uh, you can follow that. What's 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 that that, that Twitter? It's Bosnet. At the Bosnet brand. Bosnet at brand. The... At Bosnet brand. Otherwise, at Kush uh, just, yeah, Hayes. Just, just go uh, to Kush or, underscore or Hayes. The Bosnet dot family. Whatever. Yeah. Check those out. But until next week, where because this is how mathematics work, we'll be on episode eighty-eight. Stay tuned. That makes sense. Yeah. Hit the follow button. Hit the subscribe button. I don't know where you're listening to us or watching this, but you know, tell your friends, tell your family, check this show out. We appreciate you. Until next week, take care of yourselves and each other. That's all, folks.